But if you can not be trying to learn how to ride a wave and fly mm -hmm. at the same time, mm -hmm. you, you make it so much easier on yourself. And you lower the risk quite a bit. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. I've been watching some of the guys try taking off. Yeah. This, and in the harbor? or In, in the harbor. And uh, I think even this rides. morning there was a couple guys at, um, by, in front of Mama's Fish House. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been going out there the last few days, so right. a good chance it was me or Chris or Junior or yeah. whatever. But uh, if you can get behind the boat, uh -huh. you don't need to go very fast. Yeah. Six, eight, maybe yeah. 10 at the most. Uh -huh. um, and so the, the trick is getting up isn't the problem. So you don't, like, you don't even have to really try. Especially if you're in the straps, yeah. um, you're going to come up. The trick is keeping it down. Mm. Mm. So it's learning how to pressure that front leg. Mm -hmm. You're supporting your weight mostly on your back leg, mm -hmm. but you're constantly kind of sliding your hips mm -hmm. back and forth to mm -hmm. get the right amount of weight on your front foot. So what I always tell people is when you get going on your first try, let it come up two inches and then jump back on the nose mm -hmm. and get the board back to the water. Uh, uh -huh. Do that a few times. And then once you kind of get that figured out a little bit, go to four to six inches. Mm, then keep mm. pressing it back down because what the skill is learning how to press it back down. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right. And so while you might want to come up and stay there mm. and like, yeah, I'm doing uh -huh. it. <laughs> yeah. You're prolonging the process of learning how to control okay. it. So as soon as you come up, keep pressing it down and get control of that skill. Yeah. Once you do, each time come up a couple more inches. Uh -huh keep pressing it down then when you get to about a foot um, which is about where you want to average if you can mm -hmm. you're gonna go both ways um, normally but if you can get to about a foot and hold it there that's that's kind of what you want to learn how to, how to maintain that altitude I guess you yeah, say. Uh, spot right uh, there. yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. cuz you're gonna go up and down six inches all the time uh -huh. you know uh -huh. and if the, if the foil breaks the surface going to aerate and you're going to find that you'll fall right back in uh -huh. uh. Uh, and then it resets and then you can come back up again but uh yeah the whole thing is learning that skill of how to keep it down because mm, interesting yeah you you come back at all whoo, yeah you're, you're and shooting up <laughs> you're shooting up yeah, yeah. that's wow. a good way to describe it okay mm -hmm. so the whole thing is, a, is about learning how to keep it yeah. down yeah that's good advice very different sport than yeah that's and the other thing i can tell you that will help you uh, hopefully minimize any risks or injuries is when you feel like things are going south and, and usually south or, or about to crash means you, you're going left or right mm -hmm. don't fight to recover as soon as you feel like it's starting to go shoot the board out from under you oh, let it go. In, oh, okay and and essentially even though you're falling you're controlling the fall yeah. and as long as the board is not under you as you fall, mm -hmm. you basically eliminate mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. risk of injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you keep fighting, fighting, and what, you bring the board up. To the what tends to happen is the board will go left. Uh huh. You'll well left or right. You try and push on the the opposing rail to recover it and uh -huh. get control again. But once it starts to go, it it's <laughs> hard to really bring it back mm -hmm. until you learn how to ride it properly. And so you're pushing, it keeps going, you fall this way, the board right, falls that way, right. and now you yeah. meet the foil. Yeah. yeah. And that ultimately is, is the most dangerous yeah. part of it. So if you feel it start to go and you're like, oh, I don't know, as soon as you say that to yourself, shoot the thing out from under you, yeah. live to fight another day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and you'll feel it, eventually you'll start to control it rather than it controlling you. Uh-huh. And that, do you, do you snowboard at all? I have, yeah. I've okay, been snowboarding, so snowboarding, yeah. Gone across the cat track? Yeah. And and if you don't commit to a, 
and as you the board will oh. wobble and yeah. catch and yeah it's the same sort of thing you always have to be committed mm -hmm. to one side or the other even mm -hmm. just a little bit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, huh. so, sort of like a snowboard on a yeah. cat track because if you stand directly in the middle and don't pressure your toe or your heel the board will start to make up its own mind uh, uh -huh. all right so that's why I say even if it's just a light amount of pressure on one side yeah at least you're giving the board a command mm -hmm. um, and it will you'll maintain some control okay yeah it's when you kind of stand there and, and try and just balance tight rope the board will start to like feel like it's making up its mind where it's going to take the you. wobbles yeah get the like yeah. yeah almost like a bike if you're <laughs> yeah exactly. okay yeah okay um another way to think of it is you're learning how to surf on a unicycle you know, there's a very specific point of balance mm -hmm. sort of like a unicycle mm -hmm. you know you can go in any direction right yeah um just add the up and down to that scenario yeah but to stay balanced on a unicycle you, you literally have to be right over it yeah yeah you can't be in front of it or behind it yeah yeah and so think of that's how you're going to surf I do a lot of bike riding. I know once I, I got to a point where I could like uh, not have my hands on the bike and be upright in that very like yep. fine line, you know, it's a little lean or a little lean, it just yep. goes off. So that, that would yeah, that's, that's a similar find that sweet spot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really. There's a very specific <laughs> sweet spot. Yeah. yeah, and when you find it and, and you figure it out, it becomes much easier. But at first, it, it's. The board comes up off the water here, all like, whoa, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much going on, you're yeah. trying to process it all. It seems a little overwhelming, but that's why I say, if you can start buying a boat yeah. or, or jet ski, it, and even if you just did 15 or 20 minutes, yeah. God, it would catapult you to the progression of it all and eliminate that initial few moments of, ah, uh -huh. and you, you know, when you're on a wave, you got five, 10, maybe 15 seconds to kind of work it all out. Yeah. You know, you get behind the boat. You, yeah, momentum. You can yeah, go. as long yeah. as you want, right? Uh -huh. And then you got the rope to kind of pull mm -hmm. against to, mm -hmm. to balance yourself. So That's a great there's idea. a lot of advantages to it. But, I mean, a lot of people don't have the opportunity. Yeah. Great. Right. They learn on a wave anyway. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Be patient. In no rush. The waves are always there. So yep. Want to be safe, have fun, and it sure looks like a... That's uh, uh, something real new and exciting. So. It is. It is. Just remember what I say. Don't don't fight to try yeah. and recover to the bitter end, because that's when you get hurt. Um, and you and you know maybe watch some other guys or talk to some other guys and see what yeah. their experiences are. But uh, that's my two cents anyway. That's what I mean. Foil lesson from uh, Dave Kalama as we uh, got a board from him. So one step closer to getting out and foiling. He had some really good advice, which was uh, maybe do some towing behind a boat or a uh, jet ski. So, I don't know, that sounds like a lot of fun.